Hey everybody and welcome back for another video, another quick update for you guys in our incubation journey here. So I've got my two helpers who are experiencing all of this, you know, from start to finish, uh, teaching the kids about the life cycle of chickens and so we've taken fertilized eggs and we are now on day number 18 I guess because our incubator is showing three days left. And if you watched the video where we first set up the incubator, you know that we started off at 21 days and as per the directions we've been following, when it got down to three days left, the automatic turner ceases to uh, turn the eggs and we have to fill up a secondary port of water in the uh, incubator to increase the humidity to 70%. So as of right now, the humidity is at 54%, temperature is at 99.5, but we are at day number three, and I'll bring you in close and show you the uh, indicator for that. But it's time to fill up the extra tray of water to bring the humidity level up to 70%, and we're actually gonna remove the automatic turning ring or uh, frame. So we will get all the, those things done and this is done as per the directions that came with our Nurture Right 360 that once we get down to day number three remaining we make these changes and uh, hopefully some of our chicks will be viable and start to pip through the eggs and hopefully within three you know three-ish days we should get some baby chicks here in our incubator. So. These kiddos are going to help me take care of the next stage in the incubation process, bring you guys in a little bit close, show you, you know, what uh, indicators we have of what point we're at, and uh, we'll go from there. So, come on in, let's have a look at the indication on the display. Alright folks, so here we are in closer with the incubator now, and like I say, we're at 54% uh, humidity, 99.5 degrees Fahrenheit temperature. You see a blinking heating indicator over here, which shows that the internal heater is functioning and working to keep the 99.5 steady. But up here in the top right corner is our automatic turning indicator. And for 18 days, this has been illuminated, showing that it is automatically turning. And we've witnessed the automatic turning, and all that is, has gone on. And there's actually you know, we're only just starting the non-turning point, so just so you know, that you push the plus and minus together to test the automatic turning, and I'll just show you. All right, so that's what it's been doing for 18 days, you know, so many times per day, it does that small little turn. But the, in the indicator light is now out, which shows that it will no longer automatically turn the eggs, and that's during the last three days. So, we got that indicator out, heating is still working fine, humidity is good, but we were, we're going to follow the next set of directions, and that is to remove the turning tray, we're going to take the cap off of port B and fill up the water with that, and um, there shouldn't be too many other things from there, but if there's another couple of things we will address them as we go. Alright, so Mr. Man is going to be up first for his task. As well, I never showed it in that last clip there, but by pushing the menu button, I'm not sure if you can see it from where you're at, but it does say day-03. So, 03 days remaining. And so for this process here now, so Mr. Man will get you to take the cover off of port B. It's just the plastic kind of moldable silicone cap. And now this is a kind of a big pot of water, so we'll help Mr. Man get it going. But we're going to be filling up A and B. So we'll just find the right speed of a filling port here. You put it in the middle, it just fills up pretty much both of them at the same time. That's right, so if we're pouring it in the middle on the divider, it's pretty much filling up both at the same time. So then like the water went overfill in one and then like it like you still be pouring in one and then like water like spills out the top. Mm -hmm. 
So again, this is what's going to bring the humidity level from what's currently around 50% up to about 70. And we're just following the directions that we reviewed in our first video. Getting this all filled up. Alright, so that's pretty good for now. And the second part of the directions with filling up the second chamber is to fully open the gray vent. So you take this and push it all the way over to the right. There you go. And that is fully open. So that's the humidity controls done. The cap, I'm just going to lay it there for safekeeping. But as far as humidity controls go, that's the two steps. Filling up port B along with A and opening up the vent 100%. So now I'm going to go get the little lady and she is going to remove our automatic turning tray. Alrighty, so here we have the little lady and so I'm going to take this cover off and let, one thing I never mentioned in the first video was uh, how much noise the incubator makes we can pretty much say that it's made relatively zero noise at no point has it been noticeable or troublesome and right now the fan, the heater is running and you can barely hear it. So when the top is actually on the incubator, that little bit of fan noise is trapped inside the incubator. You pretty much don't hear anything. Figured I would cover that for you as well. So, if you remember from putting this together, this is a turning tray. It's just slid down onto a D-shaped uh, pole. So I'm just going to get the little lady just to take that and pull it straight up carefully. And it should come right off the D-ring. And there you go. So hopefully we haven't banged any shells around. Now we can kind of space them out a little bit to give them some room. Very carefully thinking that there is a live chick in each of these. And there we are. So we'll keep the humidity and environment intact now and get the top back on. Just like that. So there we have it. We have the incubator taken care of. We got the turning rack removed. We got the humidity bumped up. We got the vent fully open. And as I showed you there, you probably never got a good view, but we are at day dash zero three. So that's the day when you start doing all these items. But, you know, the next thing is, you know, what if one hatches a day early, day late, whenever? We need to be ready for when these chicks potentially hatch and have a place to put them and treat them as if you were ordering day old or two day old chicks from a hatchery and uh, you know we're pretty much stepping in as the hatchery so we're gonna when these chicks come out of the eggs we still need to treat them as if we're getting fresh chicks from a hatchery that involves uh, chick starter feed and water and introducing them to where the water is and setting up a brooder and if you followed this channel for a, for a while you know we've got some Tupperware brooder setups and I uh, actually made an outdoor brooder, which they'll eventually go into. But for now, we're going to be setting them up in an indoor brooder. And it's just one big um, storage tote. And we're going to go out to the shed now and get that. And we'll bring it in, uh, put some wood shavings in it, get the water in there, and the feeder, and also our little mother hen warmer will also go in there. So. Let's get all that set up, have that ready, so that we're not caught off guard when hopefully these chicks start emerging. Alright folks, so here we are out in the garage. It's a bit messy after all winter. And, uh, you know, I haven't really been out here much, so I haven't done any projects really over the winter. So everything has just kind of been left to its own devices. But just going to move some containers of hay. And we should be able to get down to the brooder. Uh, 
hopefully all of our brooder supplies are there. So here's a lid for the brooder. And here's the Rubbermaid tote that we'll be using. Alright, so just for those who may be wondering, this is a Rubbermaid Roughneck 189 liter or 50 gallon storage tote. And it's pretty much our little indoor brooder. Inside you can see our various little supplies. Right, we've got a small feeder. A small waterer, and just another couple of experimental waterers and stuff that I made over the over time, along with our rabbit nesting box. <laughs> so this is just kind of being a little collect all for all of our uh, breeding and brooding supplies. What I'm going to need out of this right now is the feeder, the waterer, a little stand to keep the water up out of the, the shavings, and then our electric mother hen, which is kind of a heat plate to keep chicks warm. So we'll take all this, I'm going to put some wood shavings in here, and then me and the kiddos will carry this into the house and have it ready to go. Alright, so I'm going to get this emptied out, and then the kiddos are going to put in a decent sized layer of wood chips, and then we'll get this brought in the house. Shake out any dried out bugs or hay pieces, and then we'll get the kids to put in some wood shavings. Pretty good right now. You know, we're probably at about uh, when it's good and spread out here. I'm talking three to four inches of bedding, which is lovely. That should be plenty to get us going, and will probably last the whole uh, chick stage for these chickens. But uh, if it needs to be cleaned out in between, we'll tackle that when the time comes. But as for now, that's a wonderful little coating of wood chips and uh, we're ready to bring this into the house. And I've actually done a previous brooder setup video, so we might not get into as much detail, but we'll get it put in place and it'll be ready for when these chicks come. We just will not plug in the incubator or the brooder just yet, the, the mother hen. But as far as supplies go, We'll just lay the water and feeder in here. Actually, Mr. Man, you want to lay the water and feeder in here? Okay. Yep, the two bottles. There you go. And just lay them inside. And little lady, you want to get the mother hen? And lay that over here. Okay, and that'll go in there. And we need the little wooden block that will elevate the water. There we go. We'll take that. 
There you go. This is all of our brooding supplies with the exception to the chick starter feed. So we'll get this brought in the house and we are ready for our chickens to arrive. Alright, so one other thing, I'll take the chick starter feed. And this is just a local uh, company, the Country Co-op, and uh, it's just chick starter, it's medicated starter, and it's what we've always used on our baby chicks, and we've had excellent luck with that. Alright, so we'll get the lid on. And it's time to get this in the house. All right, get us. Let's see if you can help me carry. All right, off we go. Alright folks, so this is where the brooder will be initially set up. So all of our supplies are here, that's about as far as we need to take it at this point in time. So we are ready when those chicks arrive and hopefully everything goes right and they do arrive. But uh, that's as ready as we need to be at this point in time. Alright, there you have it. We are another step closer to some more baby chicks and our first time incubating and hatching baby chicks at that so hopefully everything continues along the same lines uh, doing well hopefully the baby chicks make their way out of the eggshells without any issues but we will be letting nature do all the work here we're not going to assist any chicks out of the eggshells I've heard and, and read many times to just let them do their thing so hopefully everything goes well this is all in nature's hands at this point in time, but hopefully within three, you know, or four-ish days, we will start getting some baby chicks, and we will try to update you if uh, that occurs, and even if it doesn't, we'll at least give you an update on either our success or our failures. So, we will cover it all. This is real life happening in real time for us, and I think it's pretty exciting, don't you think, it is? Yeah. Yep. All right, you're learning all about the, the chicken life cycle. Yep. Right from chicken to the egg, back to chicken again. So uh, hopefully it all goes well and these kiddos get to learn a whole lot from this. But overall, a lot of fun, really enjoying it, and so far so good. So keep your fingers crossed for us, and we'll update you in the next video. But until that next video happens, we hope you're happy, hope you're healthy, take care of each other, and, and peace out. out.